don't just turn the other cheek. Cook up. Well, hello there, my poor sign beauties. Today here on the SRP, we are going to be cooking these absolutely stunning pig cheeks. Now, I absolutely love these. So, the pig cheek then does exactly what it says on the tin. It's from the cheek of the pig. So, a muscle that does a lot of hard work. Obviously, the greedy pig is always snaffling all day long. If you're lucky, finding truffles and eating. So, this does a lot of work. So, it's a very tough piece of meat. But once braised down, it really, really is something special. And all that interconnecting fat melts into the dish. Absolutely stunning. In the end, you could get a fork and just gently pull them apart. So what we have here then is four pig cheeks off a Gloucester Old Spot pig. It was a big pig, it weighed 110 kilos. So a beautiful sized pig, lovely fat on it. And I snaffled like a pig the cheeks away so as you can see they're really quite big it's a great portion that is but first of all what I want to do before we start the magic is just get rid of this little silver skin on this side obviously when we put it in the pan to add a bit of color without that taken off it will just bunch up but we want it to sit nice and relaxed in the dish Just before we start that then, let me just show you a photo of the pig this came off. Absolutely stunning. Pay attention to all the fat and how, well, just magnificent it looks split in half. Just a wonderful thing. And the head was absolutely ginormous, as you can imagine. I put a boning knife next to it for scale. So there's a boning knife. And you'll be able to see in the picture the size and then once you've viewed them we'll get on i'll stop jiving start cooking you know the drill baby so really really simple then to get this tough skin off the back as you can see there there's several ways you could put your knife in Well, that knife's about as much use as a blind guide dog and just cut. Let me just go and get a proper knife. So you've heard the saying, a bad workman blames his tools. But without a decent knife, you're pretty much done for. This is my knife case when I'm working plasters. You'll be surprised how many butchers ain't got plasters. Not that I have to use them thankfully. I've got a steel needle. I've got a small beautiful saw there from Western Fowler. Skinning knives, old boning knives, several other knives. Ball of string. Beautiful, isn't it? Right, let's get back to the job in hand. Get rid of that. So, as we were, so in. Just point it up towards the meat. How annoying is that board rattling? What I need to do is put a wet cloth underneath it. And another way, another, is to, you can see the silver skin there, the old skin of fish fillet jobby. So get it in, give it a wiggle. Yeah, 
So either, either, my dear friends, the choice is entirely yours. I suppose that, in all fairness, for the novice, will be the easy way. Get yeah, in. You can actually feel how tough this cut is, just working on it. And when we take these cheeks off a pig's head, it really, really dulls the blade of your knife. Just do that, Scott. Just do that, man. So you're, you're cutting through the, the thick skin on the face, on the cheek, and then you're going down the bone and your knife scrapes across the teeth. Very, very special noise that is. So let me just show you a little video of how we get these beauties off the yud, as we says by me. So next on the agenda then what we need to do we want to season these up because we're going to fry them so really really simple bit of flour and if you've got some commons mustard powder you put that in but believe it or not I have none it's a first world problem my friends so flour salt pepper and what this will do not only season the pig cheeks obviously but we'll make them caramelize up nicely and all that caramelized flowery goodness will leach into the stew full of flavor and also help to thicken our sauce so yeah really simple job here in shake the excess off we're sorted and the more flour you can get over your kitchen surface and on the floor the better I live on the edge man I live on the edge as Tommy Cooper used to say ah. Ah. Mother. Ah. so these beauties are ready to add some colour so off to the stove we go. Okay then, so a lovely heavy based casserole or stew pot is what is needed. Little bit of oil in the bottom. Let that just come up to frying speed so all we're doing really is browning the meat here getting that caramelization caramelizing the natural sugars of the meat and the rest will happen when we slowly braise it so don't be scared to leave it in here. The longer you can leave it, the better. But yeah, that's about it. So as soon as that's hit the pan, you can see they've bunched up. Now, if we hadn't have took that silver skin off the back, they'd have almost folded in half this way. You can keep it nice and flat. So, just want to show you what's going on. We need to get a nice, nice 
hazelnut brown colour going on this. So yeah, let them do their thing, nice and gentle, just kicking over. Oh, I love the smell of burning pig flesh in the morning. That's what we're looking for. Lovely caramelisation. Better put that on, that's my other half ago, radio rental. Just have a look at those, don't they look wonderful? I mean, it's tempting, you see that, you go, oh, I could just eat that now. But you put that in your mouth, and you might as well eat an old Wellington boot. But they are beautiful. Lovely colour on that. And you can see all the flour and the meat juices have leached into the pan. So what I'll do is I'll keep those beauties warm, and then we'll get our veg in the pan add to the malay can you actually get turned on about part caramelized pig cheeks i think you can just beautiful either that or i've got to get out more i think it could be the latter okay so the rest of the ingredients for this beautiful dish is 250 ml of cider white wine, whatever you want to use, 250 ml of chicken stock, we're going to use some thyme, a couple of bay leaves, a knob of butter, and then some leeks and some onion. So what we're going to do then in the pan that the remaining oil and meat juices are, we're going to drop in the butter and start gently caramelising our leeks and onions how good do they look hey so i've added just a little spot more oil in there i'm going to put in my butter and let that magically disappear so we've got all that lovely i don't know if you can see there actually all the bits of caramelized meat and flour butter in with our leeks and our onion now you can add some carrots to this if you want to but I just fancy doing it without carrots just for a change what I'm going to do now is just gently soften this leek and onion and then in a while I'm going to add a nice tablespoon of honey which will sweeten them and just gently caramelize them down just add in another layer of flavor autumn in a bowl there the smell is absolutely incredible so you can see these leeks and onions have sweated down nice and slowly it took about 20 minutes so far so i'm going to add some honey this honey is crystallized because of the temperature mm. what i want to do is turn the heat up under this in a minute and just let it cook out for five or 10 minutes till it gets a bit sticky. Go into that. It's a little bit of dry thyme. And just increase the heat a little bit to start it caramelizing. Just keep an eye on it. In the meantime, listen to a bit of Toto. Okay, Alexa, play. Good, isn't it? Right, get under a bit more heat now. As you can see, it's going brown and sticky. That's gorgeous. What I do, in with a rough rider, all your white wine, some just like the afterburners, and then chicken stock, it's like a cup of cold tea. Mm. So we just let that come up to heat. 
don't forget the bay leaves. Just the rest of juices in there. Once that's come up to speed, don't take very long. Come on, you beauty. That's coming on nicely. Just place in these pork cheeks. Just like that. Now, two options for this. You can cook this in a very low oven. You're looking at 120 degrees centigrade. I don't know, gas mark two or three. Or what I'm going to do for a change is just when it comes to the boil, turn it down and simmer it stove top really slowly for a minimum of two hours. We'll check it after two hours. And if the meat's falling apart, then yeah, we'll get it out. If not, low and slow, we'll leave it as long as it needs. So these have been doing for just over two hours, and I know they're just yielding. So what I need to do is just take those out a little bit. I don't want them to fall apart. They're so delicate now. And then that veg has made the gravy so sweet. It's lovely. Mm. I just want to take it that little bit further. Get some fire under here. Not too much because this is quite a aggressive hob this one slowly slowly catchy piggy on a little splash of double cream now you can add some mushrooms to this if you want like I said some carrots but I wanted to stay away from that classic you know it's stew stew time just carrots and then some mustard you know it Obviously you can use Dijon, if you're feeling a bit weak. <laughs> so, that is now hardcore. Oh, let's have a go on it. Oh man. Just a bit of pepper. Now I'm just going to leave the lid off that and just reduce it a little. Not too much. Then put a bit of mustard left on my spoon. And put the cheeks back in. I could just eat that. Mm. Oh wow. Just get me a loaf of bread. We'll do it. Yeah, put the cheek back in, warm it through. In the meantime, it's mash and veg time. So you can see that bubbling away. It's reduced, it's getting thicker. One bay leaf, two bay leaf. So good. Just going to reintroduce my cheeks just to warm them through. You'll find that the residual heat is most probably enough. Beautiful way to use these pig cheeks. I'm going to dish up. Look at that. Right, let's do this. Nothing fancy. This is proper fodder, proper, proper fodder. Winter warming, autumnal, rib sticking, beautiful. Mm. Well, that's good. Let's get one of these pig cheeks. And we'll just put it on there like that. 
we got some tender stem broccoli here so just a few bits dancing round and get some of that veg and that sauce all around so we won't be stingy to put another bit that's how well cooked it is it's falling apart <sighs> i cannot wait not a bad looking plate of food if i may say so myself right let's check it out now the reason i took the bowl away is i want to show you this pig cheek if you remember how tough it was really really tough cut of meat without even any pressure it just falls apart absolutely stunning mm, right let's do a taste test mm, 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 mm. put that one over here for a minute So, a little bit of the pig cheek, a little mash, a little of the sauce and the onions. How's that looking? It's just truly amazing. Yes, it takes a little time, but my God. It is so worth it. And we've took that hard working muscle on the side of Piggy's face and made something truly, truly monumental. Mm. Be back in a minute. Safe to say. Again, no words needed. Just beautiful. Just a beautiful, beautiful, seasonal, tasty, filling, warming, sensual, sexual dish. Maybe not the last one. So if you like what you see here today on the SRP, please click subscribe when my face comes up down here. Also, check me out on my social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at the Scott Reed Project. Uh, come and follow me on those. Uh, you'll see what I get up to through the week. Me ducking and diving, making a few bob. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out any more of this epic, epic cookery and butchery. Yeah. And if you haven't already, check out my book, The Notorious P.I.G. Everything you need to know about breaking down a pig, cooking it, making bacon, making sausages. Ah, so, until next time, my friends, do go and ask your butcher for some pig cheeks and give it a go. Take care. All the best.